Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we got huge news today out of the United States Supreme Court, which is Justice Coney Barrett has now ordered briefing in the matter of Beavis v. Naperville. What is Beavis v. Naperville? Well, that is one of the many, many challenges to Illinois' assault weapon ban. This is actually a challenge to the city of Naperville's separate assault weapon ban, one that we've talked about on a, several videos with our good friend Rob Beavis. We're going to be joined by the president of the National Association for Gun Rights, Mr. Dudley Brown, whose uh, team is spearheading the challenge here in Beavis v. Naperville. He's back in Washington, D.C., but he got huge news today that Justice Connie Barrett wants to hear from the state of Illinois. So today, let's geek out with Dudley Brown. And let's spend a few minutes and talk about is the Supreme Court finally going to stop the Illinois assault weapon ban? Okay, coming to you again from Washington's premier indoor shooting facility. Of course, that's Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. We're going to be geeking out today on the case of Beavis v. City of Naperville. Now, this is one of the many, many challenges to Illinois' assault weapon ban. Absolutely one of the most evil and sinister pieces of gun control legislation ever passed in the history of the United States. As we know, because we did geek out on this case earlier, there was both a petition to a full en banc panel of the Seventh Circuit after a three-judge panel shot the plaintiff's arguments down. But at the same time, there was an emergency petition to the United States Supreme Court. Justice Coney Barrett, of course, supervises the Seventh Circuit, and she has now, officially as of today, ordered all parties to have briefs in. So this is a huge development because it really begins to show us that the Supreme Court is beginning to appear that they're willing to step in and stop some of this insanity. So without further ado, let's talk to Mr. Brown. Hey everybody, look who I have here. And this is a real pleasure, okay? Because this guy and I, we've been talking to him for a long time. I've wanted to get him on the channel for a long time. I'm a huge fan of his. I kind of want to be just like him when I grow up. It's Dudley Brown president of the National Association for Gun Rights. Mr. Brown, thank you very much for being here. Say hi to the audience. Well, hello, everybody. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of your channel, so I feel a little bit fanboyish right now. <laughs> I love watching it. I learn a ton, and uh, I'm not an attorney, so this is all learning experience for me. Well, listen, you are deep back in the bowels of the United States of America right now. You're back in Washington, D.C. doing lobbying work, I'm sure, but I understand that we got some really really encouraging news, especially for those living under the Iron Curtain of Illinois. Why don't you fill our viewers in a little bit about that? Well, yeah, I, I came in, flew in through Phoenix, from Colorado to Phoenix, and, and a circuitous route to come and, and talk with some U.S. Senators and members of the U.S. House and working on some legislation. And, and then we were literally delivering petitions to the ATF headquarters in Washington, D.C. Always a nice place. You always enjoy stopping by the ATF, and I'm sure they love seeing you drop in. And if you've ever <laughs> read about, like, brutalist architecture, <laughs> all you have to do is look at that building. It looks like Darth Vader yeah. sitting up in that sea, or, or better yet, Lord Soros. Yeah, East Lord Germany, Lord. circa 1954 kind of building. Oh, it's it's so imposing and uh they ran us literally the security ran us off of the property okay we were trying to deliver tens of thousands of petitions but while this is happening i get a text from our foundation director miss hannah hill and said and hannah and i can read the text in that southern draw that she has <laughs> uh and it's and she says uh that we just got news that uh that Amy Coney Barrett's office asked for briefings um, on the on the Illinois case. Now, for those of you who don't know, it's the Bevis versus Naperville, and, um, and this is a gun shop owner who literally was asked by the city of Naperville to move his gun shop in ten years ago into the town, and he did. Yep. And then they wrote the law, a, a city ordinance, to get rid of it, and basically. Put him out of business and and they're this close to doing it and we've had rob on the channel here on a couple of occasions great guy but yeah the the great. city of naperville is hell-bent on running his business uh, into the ground they are and so uh so we went out and filed suit and of course um all the um sausage making that goes on with that but 
But what ended up happening was that in an early summer of this year, uh, we had we had asked for uh, Judge Barrett to who oversees that circuit right. to to dig into it and and review it. And she asked for briefing papers at that time, and um, and because we we knew it was going into effect, it was putting this guy out of business. And so we figured it was worth a Hail Mary to ask the U.S. Supreme Court to get involved. And uh, as you recall, um, she asked for the briefing papers, which we were kind of excited about. And lo and behold, the judge in the case scheduled a meeting immediately and scheduled a hearing and, and pushed the timetable up. Now, okay. would he have done that if, if Justice Barrett had not asked? No. Um, William, you know better than I do. <laughs> no, by a long no, they would uh, they would sit on this thing and age it out like fine wine if they could. They're doing it all around the country. Age it out with like fine wine. Yeah. Um, although let's let's be honest, it's not fine wine. No, it's, it's vinegar, wine. man. It's vinegar by the time they get to it. <laughs> so, so the the they that's essentially what they did, and and then they had the hearing, and kind of laughed at us, and and they had a ruling that we thought was pretty vile and um, really off the mark in, in virtually every way and certainly almost like they had not even read Bruin. Mm. I mean, isn't that, wouldn't it that have been your Seems assessment? to be an what? epidemic of that going around in a lot of blue states right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny how quickly, it's only been a little more than a year, but they seem to have forgotten what that rule was. Yeah. Be, um, conveniently. Yeah. So, uh, and so, as uh, several weeks ago, not only did we file for an en banc hearing, and I know you you ran a video. Gosh, I, I was preparing for a, a, a wedding um, uh, from one of my kids, and, and so, but I saw your video, and everybody started texting me saying, William Kirk says, says he wants you on the channel, and he wants you to ask why you guys did that. Well, of course, yeah, you didn't know that we had also filed right before. Right. That's right. And you and I ended up yeah. talking. And when you explained it, because I had said on the video, I was like, listen, NAGR plays their hand really, really well. They, they're very competent at what they do. And I'm sure there's a good explanation for why they've done it. And you and I had a chance to talk. You explained it to me and it made complete sense. The minute you were done saying, I was like, OK, that makes total sense. So I was never worried that you guys were somehow or another fumbling the football. Right. You, I, I leave that to the NRA. I leave that to the NRA, not to the NAGR, you know? <laughs> you were calling me out, though, in your video, so I, I felt the heat, man. Yeah, well, I was calling you out because I said I wanted you on my channel. That's all I said. Okay. Good excuse. Uh, I love it. Um, and uh, the simple fact is, uh, yeah, we filed for an emergency review, and um, and then today we got that news that uh, Judge Barrett had, had asked for briefings. Now. What does that mean? I think we all know we desperately want the U.S. Supreme Court to stick their nose in it. Again. Yes. Uh, and Bruin wasn't enough. Uh, all these cases are percolating all across the country, and they're all really asking for the U.S. Supreme Court to stick their nose in. Now, when we started these battles, and I'll, I'll tell you this straight up front, William, I am I'm a bare knuckles political brawler. I have been a gun lobbyist for 30 years. I've noticed that about you on Twitter. Yes, I, I agree with okay. that assessment. I am not a. I am not an attorney, and I, and honestly, until really a few years ago, I said I usually said that is not our solution, or the long-term solution for the Second Amendment, until we get a real good ruling out of the U.S. Supreme Court. Heller and McDonald. I was quoted in McDonald, uh, our brief, and um, but. I never saw it tear apart any gun controls, and in fact, um, it was universally ignored. Yes. And and so, and then Bruin came. And and the funny part is, when I heard about Bruin, it was I was literally on the hill lobbying against the federal red flag law mm. by, by Senator John Cornyn. Yep. And Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut. Um, what an evil. Um, a bipartisan connection that was yeah and that and i heard about it literally while i was standing in front of the u.s supreme court got a phone call saying you haven't you have no clue how good this really yeah thing is yeah and and of course now we're finding out so uh so really naperville was um was is the culmination of a, a very immediate law that was going to 
cause irreparable harm to a citizen based on their Second Amendment rights, and uh, it was obvious. And then, of course, Illinois passes their assault weapons ban in the legislature, and Governor Pritzker says, no, we're going full bore with it. And um, that, to me, brings immediacy. It's not just one gun shop. It's every semi-automatic magazine fed rifle owner in the entire state of Illinois. Well, and then they're all being subjected to a gun registration, too, if they have the audacity to keep a firearm that they lawfully own and possess. Yeah. And if, if, if you're watching this and you say, hey, I don't mind a gun registry, I don't mind them really knowing what I have. Uh, I have swamp land in in Florida to sell you real cheap for cash. Yeah. Um, the fact is, they they want those lists of gun owners because they want to confiscate them. It's the only reason you have one. It's the only reason you do. It's the only reason. Ask some people in New York City um, who endured that for many years, and right. they many of them went willingly um, to the gas chambers. If I could uh, borrow a yeah. Image. But let's talk about this Naperville thing, because I think what a lot of people don't realize is that poor Rob Beavis was subjected to a municipal assault weapon ban. Then this, then Governor Pritzker and his cronies did what they were going to do. And even though there was that brief injunction issued out of the Southern District of Illinois, Rob Beavis didn't enjoy that injunctive relief. He's been living under the dark cloud of Naperville's assault weapon ban longer than any other gun store owner in the state of Illinois. Right. Um, and I, I spent some time with him there in Naperville and and toward his shop and talk to his people and um, I know he is uh, financially almost completely ruined yep. um, by this and um, I, I think he has a great case should we win this I think he has a great case for incredible damages um, the city of Naperville um, owes him millions of dollars and they're the ones who asked him yeah to they there. invited him in and then screwed him over right mm -hmm. um, it, maybe one of the most outlandish government moves in, a, in a and that's state. saying something when we're talking about the state of illinois because there is no state that is more sinister there's no state that is more evil towards its citizens than the state of illinois right and and even while i was there at, at robert's shop um there was there were police officers walking in the door off duty to get their firearms serviced um to pick certain things up and, and they you look around on the shop and there's like nothing there because you can't sell it. Right, right. Um, which is very frustrating. Now, let me ask you this. The, the, what's, what's being challenged here in the Beavis v. Naperville is the Naperville assault weapon ban, which didn't have a registration component. Do you believe that maybe another case such as Calkins v. Pritzker could end up perhaps being consolidated with that case so that the whole gamut of unconstitutional issues there in Illinois can be dealt with in one consolidated case? Well, I won't say I believe that because frankly, I, I, I am not probably qualified to give that, but my, the people who do our filings, uh, most notably Barry Arrington, uh, and who has done a lot of our, the vast majority of these filings on Bruin, uh, believes that's the potentially the case and would be helpful. Um, and, and our volunteer chairman for the National Association for Gun Rights, David Warrington, who's with Dillon Law in, in, out here in uh, Northern Virginia, uh, says the same. Uh, so what, what the smart move is, when you asked, when you said on the video several weeks ago, you know, said, I want to understand their logic. It's not really my logic. Usually I sit down with them and say, okay, you present the case. What makes the most sense? Right. Do we go on bonk? Do we go ask for emergency review? Um, yes, we do both. Yeah, and that's what you guys did here, is you did both. Apple. Yeah. We both fight at the apple. Yeah. And uh, um, because we want to try. And if we don't get the emergency review, okay, we'll go to on bonk. I mean, we're not giving up. We're going to keep swinging. Well, yeah, and you had you had something going for you there, Mr. Brown, which was is that you had Amy Coney Barrett sitting on top of the Seventh Circuit there. Now, if you were going to Justice Sotomayor or one of them, you know, you might as well go outside and throw rocks at the moon too. But, but right, but here you got a justice who's already on record. You know, her her concurring opinion in Bruin I thought was very very well reasoned, and uh, she definitely is willing to protect our what is supposed to be an alienable right. So that probably right. weighed into that decision for the emergency review there, knowing that. You you'd get Justice Barrett. And she had reversed, um, previously I believe she'd reversed some of the decisions by that judge. Yeah. 
So, um, so yeah, it is certainly hopeful early summer. Uh, I think she didn't need to because she forced the court to move the, to force their hand. Um, but we're back in the same situation. What is the scheduling? What's the scheduling on this now? When's your brief due? When's the uh, city of Naperville's brief due? Do we have a briefing schedule or have you not had that communication with your lawyers yet? I haven't because I literally came from the ATF office um, to this office and uh, sat down after delivering that tens of thousands of conditions. <laughs> so, so I'm trying to get this under, under uh, wraps to, to see where we're going to be, but I think it was a week um, in which they need the briefings. Fantastic. We were quite prepared for all this, and uh, we knew if they were going to grant it, we knew what was coming. Well, the time to pick that fight is right now. I mean, you and I both agree that, that you know this is this fight needs to be picked, and it needs to be picked right now with this Supreme Court. Let's. Uh, but now, real quick, you believe that probably in the next week or so we're going to have briefs in, and then we're going to kind of see some movement on this case. I don't know how. I mean, she could. Uh, Ju Justice Barrett could just ignore it. Um, She's not going to ignore it if she asks for briefing, though. Yeah, she got action in the early summer when she asked for a briefing. And um, and so I think she accomplished her goal. I can only guess. Uh, but we'll see. Um, do you think, I think this? She, I think it's likely. Do you think this pending discussion of registration and possible confiscation that Governor Pritzker and his attorney general crony have been talking about has created a sense of urgency with the high court here where they're going to need to get this thing resolved before things get real ugly in Illinois, potentially. Well, we know for a fact that it has motivated uh, Justice Thomas. Um, yeah. And uh, um, I can only suspect there are others on the court who feel that way. Um, it's one thing to enact a red flag law which I vehemently oppose. We work very hard against. It's one thing to, to enact, you know, a, cha a, a magazine limitation. I agree, it's pretty bad. But to broad ban an entire class of firearms and literally threaten confiscation, Yeah. Um, that's way beyond the pale. And it's one of the reasons why when we're acting legislatively and my organization works very hard to work in every legislature. We can possibly operate. We say if they've got the votes and they're going to pass something, don't make the witch prettier. Mm. Let them pass something really bad because it makes it much more likely to, to destroy. Yeah, court. to challenge. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, if, if it's just a slight regulation, that's usually difficult to beat. Um, but a pull out ban with Bruin. I'm sorry. There's they have no historical analogy to to claim that that. Key. Well, and let's face it, they're calling it their Bruin response bills, which is basically like, oh yeah, we'll watch this. That's literally what these state legislatures are doing. They're thumbing their nose at the United States Supreme Court. Listen, for all of my viewers who may not be familiar with the National Association for Gun Rights, why don't we uh, wrap this up by you telling us a little bit about NAGR and most importantly some resources where my viewers can go and show you guys some love and, and join the party and become a member of NAGR. Well, if you're getting this before December 7th, I think you are, um, you should sign the ATF's petition against the executive action um, that, that uh, President Biden and his White House and ATF have, have gone around Congress and decided to enact universal gun registration. Um, remember, we defeated it on Toomey Mansion way back in 2013 that was my organization yep uh and uh we spent a record amount of money on that fight uh opposing uh to me mansion and and we're ready to again but uh unfortunately they did it with executive action donald trump showed them how to do it with bump stocks yep and now they're doing it that's and true so, so sign that petition against that uh gunranks.org is our our website and there's lots of different ways to get you involved uh what we tell people is is sign petitions get involved that way um we'll prove that we're worth it we're guys who fight there are other people who fight too um we do what we say we're going to do if you sign a petition we hand deliver it every freaking time and my staff gets tired of that um they're like this is a pain in the butt to go deliver 120,000 petitions by physical petitions um takes multiple vehicles, sometimes you rent a, a moving van, right. and boxes and dollies, and, 
And but that's the only way to get politicians to understand is, uh, as the saying goes, when they feel the heat, they see the light. And so we love to apply the pressure. I don't know that the ATF and, uh, executive action that we're looking at right now is going to can be overturned. Um, well, the problem is, is that that bipartisan Safer Communities Act actually gave them a little bit of legislative framework from which they can operate, unlike what they did with forced reset triggers and solvent traps and bump stocks and all that, where they had absolutely no legislative right. foundation to, to stand on. The problem with what you're talking about is ATF Rule 2020R-17, which is this new redefinition of what it means to be engaged in the business of selling firearms. And unfortunately, the Bipartisan Safer Community Act put all the legislative framework in place for them to shove universal background checks down everybody's throat. Dudley, one last question. What's your Twitter handle? Because if, if people, if you're not following Dudley Brown on Twitter, you're missing out on A, a lot of good information, but B, also a lot of entertainment value. So what's your Twitter handle again? Uh, yeah, we have some fun. D well, you Dudley do. W Brown. Dudley W Brown. U-D-L-E-Y W Brown. And uh, uh, yeah, we, we do some shooting. We, we make things blow up. Uh, occasionally put with people like Kyle Rittenhouse in a helicopter and let yeah. a machine gun out of it. Um, so, well, you um, also hold politicians accountable on your Twitter account, too, I've noticed, which I appreciate. Do. Yes. We do. I, I like tearing out at them and, and um, naming names. Yeah. I especially like to name Republican names, uh, whether it's Donald Trump or, or John Cornyn or uh, you name it. I, I like to hold them accountable the most. Well, you're, we're going to get you back on the channel because you and I are going to do a deep political geek out session here real soon. But in the meantime, listen, first of all, good luck back in Washington, D.C. Come back in one piece. Thank you to you and everybody else at the National Association for Gun Rights. I know the folks in Illinois, Rob Beavis in particular, are incredibly grateful to have you behind yeah. them. Uh, folks, this is Dudley Brown. The organization is National Association for Gun Rights. You hear me talk all the time about there are some organizations that actually put your, your money where their mouth is. They actually are willing to get their knuckles bloodied. This is one of those organizations. So if you're looking to get some bang for your buck, people who are actually fighting for your rights, I highly recommend National Association for Gun Rights. Dudley Brown, thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Next time you're on my channel. All right. Okay, I want to thank Mr. Brown once again for taking time out of his incredibly busy schedule to spend some time and geek out with us today. Now, if you're interested in joining National Association for Gun Rights, just showing us some love or signing that petition that they're going to present to the ATF, we're going to put links down below in the description box so you can do all of that. The case, once again, is Beavis v. City of Naperville. Obviously, there will be a lot more developments occurring over the next few weeks, and we will be sure to let you know. Now, in the meantime, if you guys got any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box as well. Now, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.